there, ScriptCat here. It's, uh, thank God it's Friday, right? Uh, just a quick scope. Uh, today, talking about budgets. I never used to think about budget when I used to write specs. Money was no object, right? Well, money is an object. Um, I just read the Scoggins report that came out. Up until August of this year, only 46 screenplays have sold in Hollywood. 46. It's 30% down in sales and the second worst year for spec sales in seven years. Um, every year, about half of the Writers Guild, WJ Writers, do not work. They do not report income. That's the reality of the business. So why I'm telling you this is not to uh, you know, make you upset. It's just the reality that you have to think about when you write your specs. It's astronomical, the odds of selling a spec to a major, you know, uh, studio. And you can still write spec after spec and bang your head against the wall, and that's fine. But if you're writing specs where the budgets are $100 million, you, very, you limit yourself to a very, very tiny group of companies that could theoretically really make your film, the reality of it. But as I say, if you write your spec, and I get this from writers... So you're trying to diminish my ideas and my vision. No, I'm trying to have you write in the reality of the business, in the paradigm of the business model that Hollywood is working. There are so many years I banged my head against the wall writing specs that were huge budgets. And yeah, go out and pitch them. And at the time I was an uncredited writer and my writing partner and I would have meeting after meeting, but we would, you know, we'd come close but not sell anything. And it was it was difficult my point is you should keep budget in mind when writing your spec because you open up the the opportunity for a spec if the budget is lower in fact you don't want to give a, a spec to a company that can't make that film or doesn't want to that's not in their business model Be, even if they like it they're not going to want to buy the script and then spend a lot of time in development to take away characters take away locations rewrite you know, basically dismantle the project for a budget, you know, one million to five million is different than if you write a script that can only be made for sixty million dollars. You know, and then you're gonna have your script that can only be made for sixty million dollars and Hollywood doesn't want it, and so then where does the, where does the script go? It could be a calling card, absolutely. But I'm saying if you really want to try to get into the business and work, you know, you could craft ideas that uh that are smaller films that actually can get made. Everyone wants that brass ring. Everyone wants that A-list. Um, but, you know, you, you might change your attitude after five, six, seven screenplays and then ten years and say, wow, you know, what's going on? Why can't I get anything made? Because you're going after a very, very tiny little fraction of the production um, in Hollywood, and like I said, 46 specs have sold this year. That, those are horrible numbers. Horrible numbers. But I don't say that to discourage you. I say it to encourage you to, to care about what you're writing and really methodically think about it. Because many writers say, oh, I have a great idea for a movie. It's not. You know, it's a business as well. And I'm not saying follow the business trends because you have to write what you're passionate about. But, but don't waste your time, your precious time on things that will never move forward. They just are a, a giant 800 pound elephant that's just not going to go anywhere. And you don't know that while you're writing. So there's a fine line to balance, but you know, you're going to have to be the one um, to make that decision. Because if you continue to write specs that don't sell, that are $100 million budgets, and they can't be made for less, you're going to have a pile of screenplays that you know hopefully will be calling cards, but really aren't moving you forward uh, down the field. You know, so that's my rant for today. Uh, you know, think about budget when you're writing your spec, truly, because if you're going after the A-list tentpole, you know, um, summer Hollywood blockbuster movie, those movies aren't specs. You know, uh, Mission Impossible is not a spec. It's an assignment job. In fact, the director co-wrote the script, you know. James Bond is an assignment job. The Avengers, all these movies are assignment jobs, and that's where you want to be is the screenplay assignment. Uh, I've only sold one spec in my career, and now I'm working on my 14th paid assignment. And, uh, you know, assignment work is when you sit down and get paid to write in a protected bubble. It's fantastic. And, and most of the time, 
the movie that you're writing has somewhere to go because many producers don't make films without a distribution deal and a lot of the, the companies have output deals with, with, with other companies that buy their material. So it's a fantastic place to be uh, in the assignment world. And I know many screenwriters bristle uh, because they want that it's their idea. I didn't come up with the idea. Well, the idea becomes your idea, even though it comes from the producer, uh, as a pitch from the producer to a writer, as the case of my movie that's on Sunday night. Uh, it was an assignment job. Fantastic. A little bit out of my wheelhouse. It was a thriller. Totally enjoyed writing it. Fantastic experience. Um, and it screened Sunday night on LMN, Lifetime Movie Network. It's called Mother of All Lies. It's a thriller starring Francesca Eastwood. That's Sunday night. Check your local listings, Lifetime Movie Network. Um, and as I always say, keep the faith and keep screenwriting because, you know, if you stop writing, you are guaranteed never to have any chance at success. Think about it. In a business where there is no chance, I mean, in a business where there are no guarantees, even when you sell, I have five projects in development hell, meaning the scripts, I've been paid to write them into a production-ready screenplay, and then nothing. Business model changes for the company. Global economics change. Actor falls out, and, and the financing was contingent upon that actor. So many things are out of a writer's control, but you should be blessed and happy to get paid to write. And not everything that you write is going to be produced. That's the reality I had to learn early on in my career. I thought everything that I wrote was going to go somewhere instead of in a drawer, you know, um, or as a doorstop or piling up, you know, in, in the corner. And the same reality comes when you are paid as a professional screenwriter. Not everything that you write that you're paid for will be produced. But Sunday Night is my seventh produced film, which led to my eighth produced film, Mommy's Little Girl co-wrote that and that's coming out uh, either November, December or January of next year so it's very nice to come off from one film and go on to another and the last 10 months have been very blessed with two produced films and now I'm working on a TV pilot assignment and so that's what you have to do to stay in the game is, is keep fighting and keep creating material that you're passionate about and and you'll you'll find producers who, who you work with and directors as well and if you have a good working relationship you'll work again that's the key and it's difficult and you really have to want it more than anything else on the planet because everybody else wants it but it starts you know the business has a way of filtering out those people who want it because they think it's easy just like a like a career in acting that many friends who wanted to be actors because they had a good look well, I had a good look and then they realized how difficult it was to be an actor in Hollywood even to make a living same way goes for screenwriting I've had friends who wanted to be writers and they're not writers you know you know when you're a screenwriter when you're failing and you're criticized and you say, wow, I have to get on to my next one. And that doesn't even stop you in your next one. And, you know, the, the, uh, the movie that just wrapped in August was my 28th screenplay. So it's been a long haul journey and it's not one draft of each script. Some of those scripts had eight drafts, polishes, rewrites, blah, blah, blah. So that's a lot of writing. You have to love it more than anything else. And I think that you do. Uh, follow me on Twitter at ScriptCat, also on Vine, and you're on Periscope. Uh, go to my blog, my blank page. I have over 180 articles about screenwriting, and I have a website, 5oClockBlue.net. There'll be information about my screenplay consulting services, my free app. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Uh, it feels good, you know. It's always good to be back in the swing. Um, uh, I have a new free app from Yap, Screenwriting Guru, it's called. You can download it. Not, it's not on the Apple Store. You download it from, from Yap. And I send out script tips twice a week that uh, come from my upcoming book. I'm going to have a book on Amazon in the next few months uh, that I'm quite proud of. I've been working four years on this book, and I joke it's been 20 years of experience. But I try to craft a book to show the journey of a screenwriter and, and how you must be humble and blessed about and study the craft. And you're always studying. You never stop studying and, and learning. I'm still humbled by the craft, uh, even at this point. Yeah. You know, just happy and blessed to be in it, you know. Since I was an 11-year-old kid, you know, I've been making films, and it's been my life's dream, and I'm very happy. And like I say, you have to be ready for the, for the down, dry times as well as the successful times. So I'm very happy uh, these last 10 months, last year, have been really good, and just trying to build on that, that. And there's been down times and slow times, but it's how you stay in the game is the key so that you're not, you know, you're not pushed off the cliff and you never climb back. 
and many of my friends have been that way and they they move on in life life gets in the way they have a baby they have a child they have a job they have and writing becomes five minutes of their day and then it becomes one minute and it doesn't become a part of their life anymore so um, this is what I must say you must want it more than anything else uh, and you must be doing the proper work necessary that's the key you can't be boasting about how you know oh today I did this and blah blah, blah and not really be doing it you have to actually walk the talk you know talk the walk walk the talk whatever you got to be doing the work necessary and the studying and taking your lumps and coming back even stronger learning from criticism being a collaborator and team player these are all things that I've learned you know I've worked with Academy Award winning producers uh, and veteran directors and also Academy Award nominated actors Emmy and Golden Globe nominees and I you know I was blessed to be with around these people and then when they became some of them my friends and mentors and actually being on the set working on my film and I'm working on the set writing you know it's such a, a golden learning experience and you, you talk to somebody who's been in the business and you ask them simple questions and see how they how they conduct their their business you know and that's how the best way is to learn get mentors you know so that's my rant for today have a fantastic weekend I'm out of here uh, I'm going back to work yes as I say some of us screenwriters do not have weekends but look for my film Sunday night on LMN mother of all lies stars Francesca Eastwood she's in the new heroes reborn TV show uh, she's also Clint Eastwood's daughter uh, and it's a great thriller. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm excited. I'm going to have a little premiere party with friends, and hopefully they won't talk too much and ask questions like, did you write that scene? You know what she said? Did you write that dialogue? I have friends who still ask me that. <laughs> and I say, how long have I been doing this? Of course. Do you want me to give you the screenplay to read? <laughs> no, the actors did not make up the dialogue. There's no improv on the set. You know, everything is scheduled and planned out, and, you know, it's, it's, it's laughable, but, you know, it makes me want to watch the film alone sometimes because, I, as I always say, the first viewing is so important, you know, and, and special and priceless. But you got to enjoy with friends, right? You got to enjoy the, the good times and the sacrifices and the hard work that it's taken to get there, and they all want to celebrate because they know the journey. They've been around long enough as, as good, solid friends to know the long journey that it's taken to get to this point, you know? So we're going to have a good time. Uh, at the screening party and I uh, hope you can watch Sunday night LMN uh, 8 p.m. check your listings take care have a fantastic weekend and we will talk again live on Periscope tips tricks and tactics to help you survive as a working screenwriter in Hollywood